making sure the chat's enabled. Live chat, yes, cool. Right, just wait for the uh, that to kick in. Right, we're nearly there. Here we go, looking good. Right, let me see. Top of the chat. Living in 1984. I love you. Now, is the audio and visual okay? We need to make sure that that's good. Hey, Faye, good to have you on board, honey. Oh, right, let's go down to the very latest one. Audio and visual, are we coming in clear? That would be nice. Whoo, what a day. Both good, Alpha Prepping. Thanks very much, buddy. Awesome. Uh, if everyone can hit the thumbs up, it really helps because what that does, as uh, most of you are aware by now, it enables all of the people watching on the um, replay. Um, if you're watching on the replay, hi, thanks for coming along. Um, you'll be able to see all of the chat, okay, replayed. So if everyone can hit the thumbs up, that'd be cool. Do you know what I might do it myself? I've never, f here we go, 37. Um, 38, yep, yeah, that's cool. The thumbs up's working good. Let me just check. Oh man, I've been caught on the hop. I'll explain in a minute. Uh, yes, that's all good. Now, <coughs> guess what? Um, a bit of breaking news um, before we go into the nitty gritty of what we usually talk about. Um, I now have a website. It's up and running. It's not properly complete, but it's as good as, and there's a mailing list and that is all functioning good. The link is below this video. If you click onto that, it will take you straight through to my website. Um, thank you very much to Mouse and Lee for working tirelessly um, last night and today. Um, I was up to half past 10 last night getting this website thing and it was a right ball ache, I'll tell you. So it's all finally starting to fall into place, which is absolutely awesome. Now there's gonna be big things coming um, to the website over time, okay? Um, whenever you feel you need to, just click on the link and it'll go through. Um, a good tip would be subscribe to the mailing list. That means any sort of um, discounts coming up. Um, I plan to do some sort of shop in the near future. One-to-one um, -one live chats, that sort of thing. Um, there's going to be a blog. There's going to be videos there. There's going to be members. There's going to be all sorts of things on there. So if you don't want to miss out on anything, don't subscribe to the mailing list. If you want to keep up to date with any latest greatest news that's coming out it would be straight email to everybody so that's cool andrew christopher hi mate <laughs> awesome so let me see quickly who's in the chat <clears throat> metallic reality awesome born outside wildwood weeds super awesome um so and yeah we got moderators in the house and yeah um, the girls aren't mucking around in the moderators tonight. They got their dominatrix stuff on, so don't muck around in the chat. Don't be naughty because you will be put on some severe naughty step. All right. Happy day. So keep it clean, keep it cool, and we don't want to go too political. All right. Um, there's loads of um, buzzwords and all that sort of thing. Tactical, another moderator in the house. Absolutely awesome. And um, yeah, we've got a bit of news from the trailer that's just come through um, within the last. It's been mental the last half an hour. Um, I've just seen all of the information about this trailer and it looks like it's actually going to happen. Um, I haven't said yes to it, but it is looking good. It's right at the top, 800 quid on a budget. But um, yeah, it's a really good one. And we need something that's going to last. Um, we don't want someone that's going to keep breaking down. Also about trailers, World Runner Campfire is um, at some point soon. Um, Voza, there is rumours, I'm not sure if this is true. But Voza will be banning any trailers that are handmade. That's what I've heard. Whether it's true or not, I don't really know. Okay. So, yeah, there's lots and lots to discuss tonight that like you wouldn't believe. Every week seems to be getting madder and madder and madder. It's every day, isn't it? Every day you wake up, oh, what's happened now? And it's it's been something. Oh, I've just seen on the chat there, Gary, RGJ Outdoors. Salute you, sir. And I didn't mean to call you sir. I know you work for a living, son. <laughs> All good in the hood. Right, let me see. <clears throat> We're going to say a quick hello to some of you guys. And look at that. There's 141 people in the chat in five minutes. That's got to be a record. So thank you ever so much for everyone coming along. 
and welcome to, what is it, 180 new subscribers in the last 28 days, which is mind blowing, okay? Some of you guys that are new to the channel, um, feel free to go through my videos and have a look at and see what I've been up to over 12 years now, crazy. So yeah, 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 it's all been pretty bonkers. It's absolutely been bonkers. So let me take it from the top. Um, living in 1984, um, John DV, Paul T, Pedro Moon Unit, born outside, Wildwood Weeds, um, Andy Tower, Tower. Uh, let me see, oh, there's loads of people in there. This is insane. Four by four fella, much respect, a newbie to the channel. Um, Polar Red, what was that Captain Scruff? <laughs> I like that. Um, Gorilla Shadow Man, awesome. Loads of regulars in the house, which is really good to see, actually. It's great that you guys keep coming back for more because there is a lot going on. Trust me. Um, UK Newbie Prepper, hi, welcome to the channel. Um, Alan Coleman, hello, mate. Um, Marco Pizzuzu. Teddy's Knives, bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> oh yeah, there's just loads. Paul T, la 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 la. There's so many. It is absolutely loads. So welcome everyone. <coughs> so, um, like everyone watching, um, especially if you're watching on a replay, um, everyone in the chat right now are now going to say where they're watching from, okay? Because it's always interesting to see where all of this prepper community is, not just in the UK, but all around the globe, okay? So if you can just quickly whack into the chat, where you're from, that's it, really easy. And let's see what's going on. So we've got people from Norfolk, Ireland, Essex, West Wales, Yorkshire, Chicago, Illinois, um, South Bucks, Australia. Oh, look at this crazy. Edinburgh, Derby, South Wales, um, Southampton, Albania, Herefordshire, Norfolk, um, Madrid, Spain, West Yorkshire, um, Worcester, West Wales, Exmoor, blimey, look at this, Ipswich, um, TN, USA, TN, oh, I'm not sure where TN is, forgive me, I'm in the UK, I've got no idea, you've got 50 odd states, <laughs> is it um, Tennessee, maybe, I don't know, Norway, um, Bedfordshire, North Wales, Oh man, it's so hard to keep up. <laughs> you guys are from all over the place. This is awesome. Glasgow, Nottingham, Denby, North Wales, Middlesbrough, um, from the Wirral, awesome. <laughs> uh, Kent, um, uh, Lancashire, Stoke, um, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Isle of Man, Leicestershire, uh, Cambridge, Tennessee, um, Farnham, Cornwall, Hampshire, Middlesbrough, Isle of Jura, nice single malt place, Liverpool, Chichester Harbour, Isle of Wight, Hull, someone's got to come from Hull, never mind, <laughs> uh, Devon, Buckinghamshire, D Derbados, I don't know where that is, um, Hartlepool, West Mids, um, Dundee, South Wales, North Devon, Upper Volta, no idea where that is. Uh, let me see. Yeah, <laughs> wicked. Northern New York, South Water. Blimey, this is insane. This isn't just the UK. This is this is a global thing. People from Australia, that always freaks me out. That's um down under, man. That's proper cool. So that's very good. Now shall I spread some news? Um, some of you have probably been guessing. Sardinia. Well, hey, um, let me see. Um, Buena Zera. <laughs> Comba. Oh, look at that. I don't know where that is. Um, Sun Kin. I, I've got no idea what it is. What country is that? Is that... Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Black country. Awesome. Now, yeah, as I was getting sidetracked there, sorry about that. Um, fuel prices. Now, some of you may have known that there's been a little drop in fuel prices. So much so, um, we was paying, was it 169.9 for a litre of diesel here in uh, mid-Wales. That's just gone down to 191.9. 
Um, I have a friend of mine who is down in a place called Abergavenny in uh, South East Wales, I guess. And he showed me a post and that was 179.9. That's crazy. And it's strange now, isn't it? Because it wasn't... Joe Gould, hi. Um, it's strange because it wasn't that long ago where those were the actual average sort of price and it just went up to nearly £2 and it's dropped down again. So yeah, can you let me know where you are and what you're seeing as regards diesel and petrol if you feel we need to what petrol prices too. It'd be interesting to see this because the guys watching on the replay, um, they will have a better idea of what the fuel prices are doing all over the UK. All right. Now, I've heard a few people on my Instagram account saying that they're still paying £2. So it's really weird. So Prepper Granny, hi darling, how are you? Hope you're good. 186 unleaded. So that's pretty funky. Um, what have we got here? West Africa, um, Upper Volta. Oh, wow. Cool, we got someone from Africa in the house. So we got Sterling, uh, 191.4. It's about the same as what I'm paying out. Norfolk, 197. Um, Shropshire, you're getting a good deal there, 190. Um, Norfolk, you're well getting ripped off by the sound of it. Um, 197. Reading, sheesh. 189, 179. There you go, South Wales. That seems to be the cheapest in the UK so far. Um, 185. Uh, Chicago is about five bucks a gallon. That's probably the average in the US, I guess. Um, Bridge End, um, South Wales, 191. Southampton Petrol, not diesel, is 181. So, yeah, that's pretty mad. Wow. Essex, 191. Um, Jim Morrison, 1 euro 95. I'm guessing that's an island, am I correct? Um, 196 in Hartlepool, 179 in the Black Country. It's wow, it's mad all over the place, isn't it? So it's 179 up to two pounds. That's a huge drop. I would assume that this would have balanced out because this has been going on for about four or five days now. It I'm sure it would have balanced out to around five p um around that, but no, it's clearly still up to two pounds in some places. 180 in Bedfordshire, uh 187 diesel, Pembroke Dock, 173. That's the cheapest that I've seen. £1.73. Uh, oh, that's petrol, sorry. Yeah, obviously not everyone has diesel. Most Some people have petrol as well. Uh, 196 in the Isle of Wight. Derv, I don't know where Derv is. Um, that's 193 there. Um, 177. Unleaded. Derby, Costco, 170.9. Wow. So, yeah, there seems to be big fluctuations all over the UK right now. Gee whiz. Um, someone said, um, do you see it jumping up again? Yes, I think the prices will continue to fall a little bit, but um, expect to see some sort of friction between Iran and Israel. OK, we've got um, the drinking lady, should we say, in America going over to Israel soon. And I would have thought usually when a senior head of state visits a country um, to do with what's going on globally, it's usually something happens not long after that person leaves. So whenever the drinking lady leaves Israel, um, expect um, prices to jump up. OK, so I'm not entirely sure when it is. If anyone knows who I'm talking about with the drinking lady in America and um, when her um, trip to Israel is, if you can put that in the chat, that'd be cool, because I suspect um, probably within 10 days of that um, meeting concluding, you're going to see big changes in fuel prices. I um, under from what I understand. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on. <coughs> so let me just have a quick drink of the uh, soft stuff. Right, two hundred and eleven people in the chat. Welcome everybody. Ninety-seven thumbs up. If you can quickly come out of the chat, just hit the thumbs up. You've only got to do it once. Okay, and it, as I say, it really helps everyone in the replay to watch all of what you guys are saying. Um, Pelosi's going to Taiwan. Da, da, da. Right, she is due... No, sorry, I think I might have been talking about the BIN guy going out to Israel. I got mixed up there. So, yeah, there's going to be... That's all going to be happening in a short period of time. So, yeah, expect to see some big prices changing. Yeah, sorry, my mistake. Um, thanks for correcting me. Um, 
that's good because I do welcome constructive criticism, okay? Um, some of us get it wrong and anyone corrects me on it, it's great, you know, I can update and tell everyone it's important, then that's done, okay? Sun Kin, thank you very much. That's awesome. Prometheus Pockets, hi. Awesome, good to see you. Uh, Marco, awesome. Uh, hey, Lee from the Bug Out. <laughs> uh, thanks for your help, by the way, for sorting that out today. That was a proper ball lake. And um, yeah, um, I have a website currently and the link is below this video. So whenever you want to go and um, scoot over to that whenever you want to, um, I strongly advise that you subscribe to the mailing list because you guys who do are going to be seriously in the loop with all of these changes and that could be updated daily, okay? Um, right, Tactical, 2.11 in the chat and 99 likes. That's right, yeah, thanks Tactical. Um, the more people that hit the thumbs up, it really does help, okay? So that would be cool. So we've covered the fuel at the moment. So I think um, in the current climate, it's a good idea to check on the commodities. So we're gonna go to the live. So this is the commodities market coming up to half past four on the 29th of July, 2020. Dave, always a pleasure, sir. Good to see you. So gold, um, gold jumped up. Um, wow, look at that. Gold is now 1,762.14 an ounce. That's a troy ounce. Um, palladium's up to 2K129. Um, palladium's at 901. Silver, that's jumped up a little bit to $20.27 per ounce, okay? Silver's been going crazy lately, and I guess a lot of holders, big holders, um, made a few bob in the last week, okay? It really did rocket, like 6% in a day, which was insane. Anyone that tells you that you see precious metals jump 6% in 24 hours, yeah, yeah, yeah. In actual fact, let's have a look at that. So we've got one, two, three, four precious metals, okay? Gold, $1,762 per ounce. Palladium, $2,129.11 per ounce. Palladium, $901.52 per ounce. Silver, $20 per ounce. Does that seem a bit weird to you? Silver is a precious metal after all, and silver is used in a hell of a lot of technical items, okay? So yeah, expect the price of silver to absolutely skyrocket next year, the year after, okay? Keep your eyes on that. And at the moment, the spot's quite low. Um, the cheapest that I've um, found um, one ounce of silver is still hovering a minimum of 30 pound for one ounce, okay? So there's a big difference, okay? between the spot price. Um, $20 um, to UK, what's that gonna be, about 18 pound? So yeah, it's the spot price is almost double, okay? So yeah, 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 absolutely right. Good point, silver is not even at 200, yeah. Absolutely, Dave, absolutely. Oh, also, Dave, if you um, check your Telegram um, account, I'll send you a link to this guy who's got this device, USB powered, that makes colloidal silver. Sounds cool. I haven't checked it out yet, but um, it looks promising. Okay, so let's move on to energy, right? Natural gas. That is now at 8.16. A very marginal rise of four, sorry. Um, ethanol is 2.16. Heat and oil is at 95.37. Expect that to skyrocket when winter approaches, okay? Coal. Wow, coal's jumped up. 386. That's, that's per tonne, okay? So, wow, that's gone up. Um, gasoline, that's dropped marginally. That's at currently at 344. Uranium is at 26.5. Brent is 108.36 a barrel. And crude is uh, 98.80. So um, both the oil markets and the trading markets, they're hovering around $100 a barrel. So yeah, go figure when you see the uh, prices at the pumps. Don't forget our lovely governments love to put a big juicy taxes on fuel, okay? So all of you guys um, who are on here who believe the government are your friend and they're going to help, seriously think again. Whatever you're told, it's the opposite. Okay. I'll tell you one thing. Um, looking at the WEF website today, 
Um, I did happen to write down. Right. Now, expect these markets to do some serious ups and downs in the coming months, possibly, okay? We're looking at steel, cement, aluminium, ammonia, oil, and gas. Now, you watch all of those, okay? It will be seriously interesting because we all know what the WEF are up to, okay? So, yeah, looking at aluminium now. Um, wow, look at that. That said, gee whiz. That's, that's up two percentage points. So we're talking 2,471. That's US dollars, by the way, for one ton. Okay, so aluminium is going to actually skyrocket. We saw similar trends with nickel. That absolutely broke the market for the day. Um, lead, that's dropped marginally. That's um, currently just hovering over 2,000. Um, iron ore is 106. Copper. Now, something that's going on with copper. If anyone's in the chat right now, um, I didn't manage to do an in-depth analysis today on copper because I just didn't have time, was involved in a website. That doesn't look right to me. Um, that's saying to me that it's had a 99.95% rise, but it's currently at $359 a tonne. Now tell me how copper is at $3.59 for one tonne. There's something not right there. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh that page because that doesn't make any sense to me. If anyone knows what's going on in the markets with copper today, let me know because I'm confused here. I'm seriously confused. That's insane. That's minus 7,400. No way. No way. Something's going on with copper. Okay. Um, nickel, that's at 21,000 a ton. Wow. Nearly 21,500 actually. Um, zinc, that's a um, 3.2 tin. Wow, 24,250. So the markets, they are going crazy with the metals, to be honest, of what it's looking. Um, we don't want to go too in depth with this, we'd be all night. But um, corn, that's a six. Wow, that's a 619 a bushel now. Yeah, big changes in corn. Um, feed of cattle. That's marginally, that's 179 still. Hasn't much changed from there. Uh, rice, that's uh, um, 1689. Wheat, that's very interesting. Um, 344.5. That's for one ton of wheat. That's gone crazy. Sugar, that stayed flat. But yeah, I expect sugar. See, so what I've seen that's happening over the years is things that... Um, are fed into our food supply. Um, you know, people get addicted to them, like sugar. Have you noticed how many items have sugar in in supermarkets? Nearly everything. So, yeah, just think of the government as a drug dealer in a weird sense, okay? So all of the prices from stuff that's addictive are going to be low. They're going to wait till a certain amount of people are addicted and they can't live without it, and then the prices start going up, okay? Sugar, keep rising sugar. And as some of you may or may not know, sugar lasts for donkey's years, okay? All you've got to do is make sure that you keep it away from moisture, keep it dry, and yeah, sugar will last donkey's years. So that's the markets updated for today, okay? <clears throat> so we have a little bit of um, local news, and I'm not going to name the source, okay? But um, this person told me in confidence that um, the chicken sheds all over Wales, okay, now, some, I'm not sure what percentage of these um, chicken sheds are, and believe you me, there is a lot in Wales. Okay, When I moved out here, naively thought it was just sheep, but no, there's a hell of a lot of chicken Okay, raised in Wales. It blew my mind. It, they're everywhere, these big green brand new sheds. Um, what I've heard, that a lot of them, like I said, I can't tell you how many, but a lot of them have reduced their stock flock, as it were, 50%. Okay, so expect the prices of chicken to start going up soon because if um, the people producing chicken for meat, if they've just halved their um, stock, right, this is mainly down to grains and feed, um, the prices have been crazy. Recently, I went to the Royal Welsh Show and I was speaking to a small holder there and um, they had, um, I think it was goats. They've been um, rearing and breeding goats for years and they've had to stop it, okay? It's just too expensive for the feed, all right? 
the feed and the um, fertilizers and stuff like that is gone so much. Um, what you're going to start seeing is them, the smaller farms and stuff who, who have been struggling anyway. Now that these prices have gone, like um, the farmer that we know locally down the lane there, um, he was paying, what, 300 for fertilizer? I think it's for a tonne. And now it's a thousand and that's probably going to go up even more very soon because what we're going to be doing we're going to be seeing very soon the crop reports okay now if any of you guys remember that field trading places when they switched to crop reports and they they broke the market it's pretty much what's going to be going on soon okay um harvest time typically is around september time so from september um hold on to your hats there's going to be a bumpy ride okay there's going to be um the real people in the know know um, what's coming okay they know that the yields are going to be a massive flow down to all sorts of thing with people say the climate weather changes the price of green uh, grain sorry so yeah there's going to be huge big changes okay so keep an eye out for that like we keep saying september october they're going to be pivotal times for this winter all right um, we've already spoken about the energy prices are going to ras massively like ramp up. Okay, so that's going to be October. So yeah, it's not looking good. Um, also, now correct me if I'm wrong, but um, a girl who's on here, Joe Joe Gould, she said to me recently that um, she's in West Midlands and she's noticing a trend of ATMs. You know the cash points; um, they're actually um, closing down, and. You know, you hear things like that and you think, um, well, that's pretty scary. But when you start to notice it happening in your own neighborhood, you actually take note a little bit more. And that's happened where I am. So as most of you know, I work in a place called Bilf, Wales, in the middle of Wales. OK, and um, in that town, there's a Barclays. And I've been told that that cash point and that bank is due to close soon. I haven't been told when, but it's due to close soon. So that cash point is um, one of three that I know in that town. So then there's going to be two cash points, and then there's going to be one, and then there's going to be none. So people who need to go and get cash are going to have to travel quite far away, especially like uh, myself, we're in rural areas. You know, it's not just a case of just popping down the shops, okay? You've got miles and miles and miles to drive, okay? So it's it's a bit hard with the price of fuel at the moment, but it is what it is. It's the price you pay from being away from all the idiots, as I say. Um, but one thing I did um, notice um, the other day, and I'd like to share this because not everyone knows everything, and I didn't know this until recently. Um, you can go into any post office with your debit card and you can make a withdrawal. And I didn't know this. I know you can make um, deposits and stuff, which goes into your bank, but I didn't know you can actually take money out of there. And I, so I said to um, the woman behind the counter in a post office, um, I thought, oh, that's fantastic. That's an absolute low save because the post office is a lot closer to me than all of the banks um, down in the town. So, and I said, okay, so if I was to come here, I mean, my bank um, limits me to £250 a day from any cash point in the UK. And she said, yeah, you can draw that out here, fine. So... It might be interesting to see if I'll go there in the morning, take out £250 and go there again in the afternoon on the same day and see if I could take another 250 out. If I can, that's great because personally, I prefer to use cash and dealing cash. And like I've said in the last live stream, and some of you guys come in on this one who haven't seen the last live stream last week, um, I always speak to the cashiers when I go shopping, okay? just to get feedback from, from what they're noticing in the trends from their relationships between what they do and the customers that they serve, right? And there are more cashiers now actually taking cash as payments than card payments. So that is very, very good to see because what that actually does is give that to them up there that we ain't having it with this cashless society. Um, the cashless society was rolled out as an experiment in Sweden a few years ago. Um, we was close to moving out there, um, no big secret now. But when we found out that it was cashless out there, then there are um, rural areas um, in, I would say mid to North Sweden, um, who still use bartering systems, okay? 
um, and they still use their own cash, but they keep it within their small communities, okay? So, yeah, that's the scary thing. And I do remember seeing before we moved up here in um, October last year, down south, that there were a few um, shops and making it absolutely bold and brilliant that soon they will be cashless. As if it's a good thing and they're proud to do so. So, yeah, it does look like it's going cashless slowly. Now, um, someone I used to follow years ago used to call it the totalitarian tiptoe. Some of you who know who I'm talking about straight away, most of you probably won't. And the only way that these horrible people from up there can change things to what they want is to do it slowly, okay? But like most of us are aware, especially in this community here, um, we can all comment in chat and, and leave our um, understandings and our opinions in the chat so we can all read it on the replay. And it's a true historic capture of from what we're all seeing and what we're hearing, um, how our society is changing, okay? And most of us will agree that we believe together that is changing for the worse, okay? Um, they are few, we are many, and the only way I think out of this is basically non-compliance, okay? Um, there's no way that they can put 70 odd million people in prison, okay? They just can't do it as much as they would like to. So that would be the only advice that I would say to them up top, if you know what I mean, is just say no. In actual fact, um, if you guys like follow your intuition and your instincts, etc., here's a good tip, right? Whatever you do, if it feels wrong, just say no. And it takes a big person to just say no, okay? Lots of us will bite their lip and they'll just carry on. But all the time people carry on, all the time this agenda carries on. When people start to say no, that's enough. No, I'm not going to comply. That's it, okay? Recently, um, I went into the dentist and um, I had um, a broken tooth up there. It was a scary one, really, because it happened on the night my mum died, in the 9th of March 2020. And I still had all of the roots up there and I had an abscess, it got infected. I had a course of antibiotics. I went in there and recently they'd just taken all of it out to cut my gum away and to sew it all up. Um, I had to go in there um, yesterday, the day before yesterday, and to have the stitches removed. And it was funny because because of the issue of what's going on, um, everyone in there working in there was wearing one of these silly little things on their face. Um, even some of the customers going in there to get surgery done was wearing that over their face. Um, I wasn't. I never have and I never will. Okay. Um, they said, oh, would you like one of these face masks? I said, no. And he said, um, and I just said, I'm exempt. That was it. It's the quickest way to get out of it. Okay. And she just went, fine. Last time I went there before, they wanted to take my temperature. She went to get that little um, infrared gun and put it in my head. And it was basically, come near me and I'm just going to punch her straight on the nose. <laughs> I'm not having any of that temperature stuff. Okay. So I just refused. I stood up for my rights and I said, no, I'm not having my temperature taken. And she sort of looked around, didn't know what to do. And she goes, okay. And it was it. So it just goes to show if you do stand up for yourself and you don't fall into line, the more people start doing this, the more changes are going to swing the opposite direction in our favour. So use cash. If it feels wrong, just say no, no matter what. Okay. And that's the only way that we're going to beat this. All the time people say yes and they agree to stuff that they don't agree with, it's going to get worse. All right. So let me come out of that now. Uh Loads of people in the chat now. Wicked, if you can hit the thumbs up, that'd be cool. 253 people. Well done, everyone, for coming along. Now, um, another thing. <clears throat> this was from someone else. And when I spoke to her the other day, um, she said to me that she works in the hospital, right, down in, in Wales. And this was um, quite scary to hear it from someone who actually works in a hospital as a nurse, a high-up nurse, okay? not just someone who watches bedpans and stuff. We're talking almost like a, a matron. And um, basically, she's saying there's a lot of people um, who work in this hospital who refused to get that, if you know what I mean, more than people realise in the mainstream media being told. There's a majority who just said, no, don't do it. 
we don't do it and we won't do it if you want us to do it we're going to leave okay um dave will talk about that private mate <laughs> so um she said they look back through their records right when all this started and it said quite shocking really there's been a massive a huge rise in cancer since december 2020 and i thought well why why december 2020 what what happened in december of 2020 to make the rate of cancer um, admissions to this particular hospital in wales go like this literally go mental and when i've done some research online omg guess what was rolled out in december 2020 the uk program absolutely so you know how many more coincidences are we going to just believe in blindly how many if you don't know by now if you can't see what's going on i don't know how much more information that you're going to need to understand what is going on and it's not looking good hell no it's not looking good and if anyone can remind me um the moderators nine o'clock it's drinky time Mm. so that is scary and it's food for thought okay now there's so many people that um have um, spoken to us um face to face physically um where i work that the difference i mean the people that they know personally family members who have got ill and unfortunately some have actually died and the common theme between all of this they were all, all of them, okay? Now, when you start hearing stories in the mainstream media that under a well, 20-year-old, extremely fit and healthy footballers, rugby players, athletes are having heart attacks, aneurysms, cardiac arrest, and actually dying, and guess what? Yep, they've all had that. Now, how many more coincidences are people going to just believe about, hold on a minute, that's a bit different. And you've heard that term, Southern Infant Death Syndrome. Well, now, guess what? If you don't know, is um, a Southern Adult Death Syndrome. A Southern Adult Death Syndrome, which I can't explain. But that syndrome has increased exponentially since, guess when? December 2020. Come on now, guys. If you can't start joining up the dots now, God damn, it's probably too late for your ass. So yeah, there you go. Uh, another true story. We had someone come into the shop the other day um, to read the electricity meter. And I jokingly said to her, and Lee would back me up on this, he's probably only chat now. I said to her, for God's sake, don't waste your time trying to sell us one of those smart meters. And do you know what she done? She laughed and she said, absolutely. said, I'm definitely not having one either. And that was from someone who works for the electricity company, um, a public face doing a service who actually agrees that it's a bad idea to get one of them smart meters. Now, if any of you guys watching now have a smart meter installed, do whatever you can to get rid of it, okay? It doesn't matter if you're um, a tenant and your landlord has said you have to have one. There's not way. It's not a legal requirement, okay? Now, there is a lot. Wow, did I just see something there? <laughs> Thanks very much for your donation, sir. Wow, that's um, Richard Munn City. How's it going? Five US dollars. Thank you very much indeed. Um, also, while I'm here, if anyone does want to donate, you can use the super chat like that fine gentleman just done. Or if not, if you want to go to PayPal, ensuring all of the money goes straight to the course without any deductions, there is a PayPal link below this video. If you can, you don't have to, donate what you can. It all helps. Seriously appreciate it. So thank you very much indeed for that, sir. So, yeah, the smart meter thing. So, yeah, do what you can. If you have it, get rid of it. Break it, bugger it up. Whatever you got to do, make sure that that is out of your house. That will cause you more harm and more grief than you could possibly imagine. And I'm not going to go into details now. It's a whole new video just explaining why smart meters are bad for you. IoT, Internet of Things. Um, if any of you generation below me, I'm um, just turned 50. So anyone below 50 years old and that generation, 
And as it goes lower, it gets worse. The Internet of Things, it may seem like a good idea having everything connected, you know, with like um, very extremely powerful giga 5G radiation in your property, pulsing radiation. Um, accumulative radiation, look into that. It will do your head in, seriously. So get that smart meter out of your house, okay? The more Wi-Fi connecting gadgets that you've got in your property, the worse it's going to be for you. Um, you'll probably get Alzheimer's way before you need to, all right? I'm just saying. Um, also, uh, if my brother from another mother in Germany is watching now, say hi in the chat. It'd be good to see you, bud. Um, I just got this in this morning. Now, I've got a friend who supports a Dagenham and Massive. He's living out in Germany. <laughs> and um, he just said to me that Hanover in Germany, um, they're cutting the gas supply. There's lots going on in Germany with gas, okay? So if anyone knows anything about what's going on in Germany as regards um, the energy and the gas, whoa, hold on to your hats. So if any of you guys um, are gutted that the UK left the EU, let me tell you this. Look at what's going on in the EU right now, okay? And you're going to say to yourself, within six months, I'm so glad we're not in the EU, okay? So all of you are Remainers, Ramoners, as we used to call them, they're going to be looking at wounds big time because let me tell you this, the EU is not going to be a good place to be, especially this winter, all right? They rely heavily on what's coming out of Russia, moreover gas. Gazprom is the one that's going to say what they're doing with them pipelines. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, you know, we rely less than 5% of our gas from Russia, okay? So lots of places, especially Germany, they're like 90% reliant, and they refuse to pay in rubles. So um, if I was a citizen in Germany, I would absolutely be protesting in force to their government to say, look, just pay Russia in rubles and we'll have our gas, just like that. It's all an ego trip. They're all doing what they're told by the powers that be at the top, Okay. Um, the WEF um, Young Leaders, you'll look into that. Look at the two potential candidates to be the next um, Prime Minister. Guess who they're members of? The WEF, both of them. So it doesn't matter which one that you vote for, thinking it's going to be a good thing. Trust me, once all of these new leaders are in place around the planet, New Zealand, Canada, France, Mark Mapson, <laughs> oh my God, thanks for the donation, sir. Man, that's very kind and generous. I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's awesome. It's not looking good, okay? It's really not looking good. Once all of these young leaders get into their seats of power, you're going to see pretty much what's been happening in China roll out across the entire globe. The social credit system. Yeah. That's for real. So you will have no privacy. You'll be tracked everything you do. You do anything wrong. You're going to lose credits. You're going to lose social status in the digital world. And yeah, anyone speaking out about against anything will be deducted points. And they're going to be having no money to eat and all that sort of thing. Yes, there will be rationing for food. You're going to be seeing that in Ireland as well. Okay. So you guys in Southern Ireland, watch out for digital rationing. I think that's going to be coming before Christmas. All right. Not looking good at all. There you go. Leave from the bug out. Set it exactly spot on there. Voting. I've only voted once in my life. Now, can any one of you guess who I voted for? And this is a serious question. I voted once in my life. I'm 50 years old. Who did I vote for? You're not going to get it. Do you want me to tell you who I voted for? Seriously? And this is for real? I actually wrote it down in the booth. Mr. Bean. That's who I voted for. I wanted Mr. Bean to be the Prime Minister of the UK. That's Greens. You can kiss my grits, dude. Christ, you've got to be a mentalist to vote for them Greens. <laughs> so, yeah, Mark Twain. That's it, Lee. Well said, mate. So, yeah, Mr. Bean. I think Mr. Bean would be an absolutely fantastic Prime Minister. I really do. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how seriously I take voting in the UK. Okay. And some of you people who may say to me, and I've had this before, um, if you don't vote, you haven't got a voice, you can't say anything. Well, guess what, dumbass? I don't give a shit. No, sir.
Never have, never will. I ain't fun. Got them. No, sir. Okay. <laughs> so this, do you know what? I was speaking to Lee in the shop today and he just got in the latest um, prices for freeze dried food. Now, do you remember these, um, the white tins um, fuel your nutrition? European food. I can't remember what it was, Lee, but it's the white tins with the freeze dried food in. Okay. Now, do you want to see how crazy the prices have gone up? Um, do you remember when I first come to the bug out and we was basically saying to everyone as much as we can, get freeze dried food, get freeze dried food, get freeze dried food, get as much as you can. Okay. Even if you just get one tin a month out of your wages. So we're talking 30 pound out of your monthly, whatever you've got, just get one tin a month. Over a year, you've got 12 tins. That's a hell of a lot of food that you can rehydrate. And that's going to last around 30 years plus. All right. So people say, what are you doing buying food now that you're going to eat in 30 years' time? I'll tell you what, if you've got children or youngsters, fuel your preparation tins, right? That's it. So how much are you going to be paying for um, quality beef, quality chicken, anything freeze-dried food, right? How much is it going to cost you in 30 years' time? How much are you going to have to spend to make sure that your kids who are going to be 30-something at that point in time to feed them? When I first got there, right, now this was this was going back even further. This is 2020. The prices of one of those big tins of freeze-dried food was £38. £38 for one tin with loads and loads of freeze-dried food, which will last up to 30-plus years, okay? In 2022, this was the 11th of February, that £38 turning to £48. It jumped up £10 for one tin. Do you know what it is now? For one of those tins and these prices were released today guess how much 60 pounds for one tin 60 pounds is the latest one and that was um cubed dried beef 60 pounds recommended retail price for one of those tins okay so that is nearly doubled in two years that's insane right it just goes to show that's a good data point right there. 2020, 38 pound a tin. Now, 60 pound a tin. Two years. Look at that. Insane. Absolutely insane. It's almost doubled in price, which is bonkers. So that is pretty mad of what's going on. So also, if any of you guys can hit the thumbs up, that'd be really cool. You've only got to do it once. Quickly come out of a chat. Go to the thumbs up, click on it, done. That enables more people to see the live um, replay. So what we're going to do now is the emails have been coming in thick and fast. So we're going to go through all of your emails now. We're going to go back in time to um, Tuesday. Now, this is from my good friend, my dear friend out in Canada. His name's Paul. Paul Bakima. We've been friends right from the outset. Um, a lovely guy, actually. Got a lot on his plate in the moment, but he's a beautiful guy. And he does a lot to help people, cry. So he was saying to me that um, there is shots fired not far from where he lives. Okay. So here we go. This is what Paul's account was. Okay. Um, I was awoken today at 6.20 by a system similar to the Amber Alert system used here in North America. The main intersection showed in a clip on a five-minute drive from my front door in the photograph, which I can't share, unfortunately, at the moment, but I will be doing that um, at some point in the near future, the screen shares, um, there was bullets fired through this glass. Now, unbeknownst, but it's, it's come to light now, okay, that the car that was full up with bullet holes was an unmarked police SUV car, okay, a sports utility vehicle. Bullet holes all through the glass. The story is someone decided to target homeless people in the town and shot them. Two of them died, two of them in the hospital, and they shot back um, at the police, and the police actually shot dead the guy doing the shooting. Now, what do you think they're doing in Canada as regards to this? Okay, so if they get their way and people just fold and hand them in or whatever it is, the criminals are still going to have guns. The cops are going to have guns. People who have given up their weapons aren't going to have anything. 
How are they going to defend themselves and their family knowing full well that if they picked up the phone and said, there's an intruder in my house now, send the police around now. You'd be lucky if you ever see the police there. Go figure. So that was from Paul. Thank you for that update, dude. Now we're going to go to this one. Now, this is quite an interesting one. This is where I need your um, help and advice for this guy here. Um, his name is Rob. That's all we're going to leave it there. Pretty anonymous. Um, can you please talk about generators and which ones to look at? Hearing of blackouts coming in winter time is absolutely true. Here in the UK, we are going to be having rolling blackouts. It's been all over the mainstream for a while now. Um, I also have just got a big Berkey water filter, um, apparently the last 10 years. So if you can go into that and what you think of them. Personally, um, I've never had a generator and I've never had a Berkey water filter. Um, I myself personally have got a number of Lifesaver jerry cans and each filter will do 20,000 litres. Okay? Obviously, the, the cleaner the water, the longer that filter will last. Um, if you're putting it in like heavily contaminated pond water, for example, you know, expect that filter to last a lot shorter. Okay. So the idea is, is try to make sure that your water is clean or as clear as you can before you filter it. Now, my advice would be pre-filter. Okay. So basically put any dirty water through any fine cloth. That's all you need to do. Okay. The more layers of fine cloth that you have, t-shirts will do anything material okay lay them all up together put them in a the bottle with a hole in the bottom put a dirty horrible manky water through and you're going to have clearish water come out once you've got that water then put it through your water filter okay if you're not confident with your water filter after that then you boil it for a minimum of five minutes okay that's what you need to do so Berkey water filters i've got friends all over the us and they absolutely swear by them um I believe they look like the old school style um, cup of tea sort of canteen and the big sort of chrome barrels of the little tap on the bottom. They look quite similar to those. And they got this, I don't know what the filter looks like in the Berkey water filter. I've got no idea. <coughs> but what I do know that my friends in America absolutely rate them. They said they're really good. Um, as regards generators, um, there seems to be a lot of traction online with um, Jackery. I've got no idea. I've never used a Jackery. Uh, I might see if I get a chance to contact them to say if they will send um, a variation of their product line over to review so I can test them to see. Hey, Bjorn, how's it going, dude? I hope you're well, sir. Bjorn. Sorry, not Bjorn. Bjorn. You should spell your name B-J-E-R-N. <laughs> I'm joking, sir. I'm just joking, sir. So, yeah. So, generators, um, obviously with the post of petrol diesel okay i think less and less people are going to be using um i don't want to i'm not going to say fossil fuels but if any of them you're going to use um petroleum based generators should we say okay um the price of fuel is seriously going to come into play okay um it seems to be that the solar ones are probably your best bet okay there's lots of different ways that you can generate power for free okay so wind water sun any one of those will give you energy. All you need to do is figure out how to store it. Once you've stored it, then you can transfer it and reroute it through, um, what are they called? Um, converters. Oh, God, it's escaped me now. It's like a step up, step down transformer. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. You need to pass it through one of those to make it sure that it's absolutely going to feed your um, electrical devices, okay? So that's my take on it anyway. Um, if I had the money... If I had the money, inverter, that's it. Thanks very much for pointing that out, you guys. The yeah, brain just went completely funky then. It really did. And that's before I have a little drinky poos, which we're only five minutes away. So the item soon is going to be um, my dad's favourite, and um, I've been drinking it for a year or so, and I quite like it, actually. It's um, called Doom Bar, all the way from Cornwall. And Cornwall is a very fine place indeed. I've been going there since a kid. Big up the Cornwall Massive in the house. The Curlew Mob. Right, so yeah. So anyone who's got any um, advice on generators and Berkey water filters, um, have you got one? Have you used them? 
what do you like about them, what you don't like about them. Okay, so fill your boots. Put that information in the chat right now so our friend Rob can breeze through and he could maybe get some hints and tips and advice. Like I say, I don't know everything. I never proclaim to and I never will. But I know some of you guys know all different things. So between all of you, there's got to be someone who knows something about a Berkey water filter and good or bad generators, what to get and what not to get. Okay, that will really help our friend out Rob in the community. So moving along to the next email. Right, who have we got here? Well, wow. it's from someone called Scott, and he just says, uh, right, let me see. Oh, okay. Right, I'm not going to uh, mention your online name, so we're just going to say Scott. All right? So I'm going to read this first before I read it out, because what I've read in, a, in an email just before I come online live was, the last sentence was, don't read this out. <laughs> so if there's something that you don't want me to read out, but you want me to read anyway, can you just put it in the first sentence? Um, do not share public or or share this, but don't share this. If you can make it clear before I get there, because I haven't had time to go through so many emails, um, I'm doing it live. So what I don't want to do is to read it all out, get to the bottom and says, oh, for God's sake, don't share that. Whoops. <laughs> so I'm reading it quickly. So bear with me. Wow. Ah, ah ha ha, then this is interesting. Right, thank you for this, because I, I didn't know when this was gonna happen, but now I know where and when. So I'm gonna read it out now, so I've just um, I've just scanned it, so it's good. So um, this is from Scott, he says, Hi Funky, Shropshire is the second largest county in England, probably behind Hampshire, hoorah. <laughs> um, Yet I've been informed that they are only currently eight police officers to co cover the entire county. Wow. So the second largest county in England has eight police officers. Wow. Right, okay. I've not done this before, but um, bear with me. I'm going to do a bit of uh, online research because I'm intrigued now. If I go to that, um, I think I've done this last week, actually, tell a lie. So we're going to use our friend and we're going to have a look. Right, here we go. Shropshire County in England. Weapon collector to Mike. Oh, right, mate. How's it going, Mike? <laughs> Don't forget, I've got a big everyone up to go on to Mike's live chat after. All right, son. Yeah. Back, back into the house, we've got um, Shropshire, second largest county in England. A population, you ready? 319,189. And that was from 2019. I should imagine there's going to be a few more than that now. You're probably looking at um, over 400,000 as a guess, okay? Um, based, to, based on the exponential rise of population growth per capita globally from what I understand. So yeah, you're looking at around about 400,000 people in Shropshire with eight police officers looking after all of those people. Now, have a little think, 319,000 people. Let's just call it that, okay? It's obviously more, but we're gonna to stick to that, right? Conservative number. How many people out of 319,000, 319,000 are adults? Okay, you're probably looking at about a quarter, maybe a third. Chris, thank you very much for your kind donation, sir. That seriously means a lot. Awesome, happy days. Do you know what? I might as well start a generator fund because I haven't got one. <laughs> that could be a good idea. Um, no one donate to the um, the trailer fund. That money's gone. It's in the bank. It's just good to go. So thanks very much to you, you know who, for really helping at that. That's awesome. So don't donate to that. I think this next box is going to be towards a generator of some sort. So yeah, 319,189 people counted at 2019. Eight police officers, if that's correct, looking after all them people. How many people out of all of those would be adults? This is, say, a third. So yeah, you're looking at around about 100,000 people are adults. Out of those adults, how many of them would be criminals? 
say 20%. All right, then, 20,000 criminals in that big county of 320,000 people. Eight police officers. How are you going to defend your loved ones and your property? How are you going to do that? Because it's obvious that the police aren't going to come to help you. There's not enough of them. And even if there were, they're not going to have time to get to you. Okay? That's crazy, isn't it? That's really crazy. But this bit really um made me sit up and take note okay in fact one's scary enough right listen to this now this really interests me okay now if any of you guys who are awake and aware you're going to know what i'm saying now um in the coming weeks birmingham will be holding the commonwealth games due to the security needed for such an event police are being brought in to help from all over the uk so what we just said there Eight police officers looking after 20,000 possible criminals in one county. They're going to take two from there. So that's probably going to leave six. <laughs> that's insane. And also, a good friend of mine told me when I was working in the security industry that there is G4S, a security, private security company. They have won um, government tenders to fill in with mainstay police operations should needed okay now what you're going to probably notice if you study the footage if you see any live videos of any riots going on now there were lots of riots and protested back in 2020 um expect to see some this autumn okay and when you watch those videos live have a good close look at what the police are wearing now you're going to notice a distinct difference between the uniforms the riot gear and the insignia now Police officers, by law, should always display their police number, okay? I think it's a four or five-digit number. Usually ward upon there, but they could put it on a rank slide, it could be on a helmet, it could be on the shield or something like that. They're going to be genuine police. Um, people there, in amongst them, should we say, dress similar, who don't have that, I highly suspect that they're going to be private security. So they won't have by law, legal obligations to perform certain police tasks. I could be wrong. But obviously, because of the issue, when it happened, the <coughs> um, bill was introduced, which basically just stamped all over the um, British Constitution, so they believe. And there's bills, there's laws, there's acts, there's mandates. They're all different things, okay? I haven't got time to go into it, but if you really want to look into those things, and maritime law is another branch off of one of those. So, yeah, exactly. That's going to be a complete nightmare because there's going to be a police shortage due because they're going to be in and amongst Birmingham looking after the Commonwealth Games. Now, if anyone has the facilities or the capabilities to record live, and I suspect this will be on television, if anyone can record the opening ceremony in whatever format they can, whether it's going to be um, a DVD, um, whether it's going to be on a memory stick, whether they're going to save it in a computer, an external hard drive, whatever media form that it's going to be. If someone, please, out there can record that opening ceremony, okay? It has to be done live because what will happen is once the live thing is finished, um, they're going to be showing in mainstream little clips of it and some of them have and will be edited they always are so it's important to record the um opening ceremony for the commonwealth games in birmingham right record it live if someone does that and let me know as soon as when that event finishes i, I need to study that in detail okay now i done exactly the same thing back in 2012 yes i was awake back then the london olympics in 2012 i had sky plus do you remember Sky Plus? <laughs> I recorded the opening ceremony for the 2012 Olympics on Sky Plus. Had it on the hard drive. God knows where it's gone now. It's been many years. But after studying that, and it took me weeks and weeks of just watching bits and pieces of it, rewinding it and watching it, pausing it, looking around. There is so much information for those who know. Okay. You're going to see, if you study symbols and symbolism, if you really know what symbols mean, how they're created, what they're designed to do, 
in relation to other symbols at the same time on certain um, places within the field of view, usually the screen, um, it does give you a rough idea of what they're planning. Now, when you look at, you might even be able to watch it all. Ah, beer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sorry about that. I was just getting carried away. Now, we're going to be using that really, really cool. It was an old pagan one that I brought. Look at that solid pewter. Beautiful, nice, heavy little thing there. Absolutely weighs a ton. Okay. Nice bottle opener. So if you'd like to join me for an adult beverage, as my friend Rob says in America, cheers, everybody. Let's get that little son of a bitch open. Have some of that. Look at that. Mama's coming. Mama's coming. Hmm. <laughs> Now I can relax. Damn, what a week it's been. But yeah, that 2012 Olympics, when I saw that, and when basically what they were showing was, do you remember the, I don't know if I should, yeah, Nightingale. There's probably a code word on there. The Nightingale Hospital that was set up when the issue started. All of that was laid out plain in sight in the 2012 Olympics and the opening ceremony. So they tell you way in advance what is going to be happening should everyone say yes to everything that they're bloody asked, okay? So if, if the government or bodies, think tanks, media, whatever says, you got to do this, you go, oh, okay. Without questioning it and looking into it and doing your own research, cross-referencing stuff that someone sent you to double-check that it is genuine. There's a lot of fake news out there. A hell of a lot, Okay. It will tell you if you've got the eyes to see, okay? If your little third eye has been opened, but some of us have, blessed be, you know, you can see this stuff coming down the road. Now, seriously, yeah, the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, if someone can record that live and um, somehow get it to me, um, I'll be really grateful because I need to study that because that's going to give me um, Commonwealth Games in relation to the Olympic Games, uh, what was that, 10, that was eight years. I would say that would probably give me a record of what to expect in five years, from what I understand. Okay, so what you will see on the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games will be happening five years' time. It's scary. 2027, bloody hell, yeah, there's a lot happening in 2027. Right, here we go. Let me just see. Um, this is interesting. This was from, I don't want to say in case, but if you say on here, then I'll say. Um, Felix Stowe Port will be on strike next month. Unconfirmed dates and how long, but this will affect, I guess, um, this will affect many truck drivers like me and consumers potential shops stocks right wow so the felix though port yeah that's pretty much um euro tunnel access into europe isn't it one of the main tram transport hubs here in the uk wow the port itself will be on strike it's unconfirmed dates um we do know that it's going to be next month okay so what we're now that's august wow it's literally a few days away so oh my god yeah i just realized august that's the most popular um summer time lots of people travel to and from europe they're going to strike that's going to be a bloody nightmare okay so if anyone needs to get in and out of europe i would say do it this weekend change your plans do it soon because if you get caught up in that strike you could be stuck out in fogland for quite a while um, you might not even get out there, okay? So that could be pretty scary. Thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Letting everyone know what's going on. Uh, let me see. I've not read this one yet. <coughs> right. I've just got to scan read this first because I've um, not read this one yet. Um, right. I can do it for for. Uh, 
Oh, oh, that's a scam. Uh, I'm going to block that. Yeah, sorry. Block, yeah, yeah, I don't want any of that bull crap. Right, who have we got here? Ha um, <laughs> ha, oi, Dylan, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Now, Lee would have me try to pronounce it. <laughs> Should I try? Oh, my God. Some of the names in Welsh. Unbelievable. It's beautiful to see. Um, be watching your channel since around 2012. So it's pretty much when I started. Always in, enjoy your content and your lives. Awesome. Now, this is from North Wales. Now, check this out. Are you ready to see me make a right hash of this? Um, <laughs> blau, blau now. Blau now. Or blau nu. Um, Festinog, Festinog, <laughs> Blau New Festinog. Oh my days, I can't even say what that is. <sighs> Lee were probably just laughing, shaking his head, going, You dozy Englishman. Yeah, probably fair play. <laughs> Deservedly so. Right, here we go. Now, this is in interesting. I'm going to read this now. Um, yesterday, I seen that they are predicting gas electric to hit £4,000 in January and said January alone could cost around £540. Luckily, I fitted a multi-fuel during lockdown, so we've been stacking up on logs and buying coal. Well done, you. Yeah, if anyone still, and I suspect a lot of you guys are, um, are still reliant on um, grid energy, gas and electric, if you're still using gas or electric to energize your home for cooking and eating etc it's going to get really bad look at that january that's usually like the coldest month for january january february is going to be tough okay um here we go uh dylan goes on to say <coughs> excuse me what i've noticed in tesco is either the prices have gone up or the dates are getting shorter I've noticed that myself. Um, and less for your money. Bread baps, 99% of the time, only have days on them. Yeah. Um, what's that? The Henland Bakery brand. Yeah, I'll get some of that now and again. Um, that's what my son prefers. He'll have to change his ways. Yeah. Do you know what? Um, I've always said this um, doing my channel. Um, when things change, whatever it is, the sooner that you adapt to that change, um, the better, okay? The longer that you take to adapt, funk is beyond help. Man, I ain't trying to learn that bloody Welsh. That's bonkers, that is. It doesn't even look... <laughs> I was going to say it doesn't even look English. Of course, it's not. <laughs> bloody hell. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'd love to see some of this Welsh stuff on Countdown with the continents and vowels. Jesus Christ. She'll have a fit. <laughs> So, yeah, what is noticed in Tesco, the prices are going up or the dates are getting shorter. I've noticed myself personally that the dates, the use-by dates on some of the um, the fresher items have seriously got shorter. I remember pre-2020, should we say, that you'd go there and you'd hunt around on the shelf to get the best date possible, just say for um, a pound of minced beef, okay? Um, you easily have about seven, seven or eight days on there. Now, if you really hunt around, you'd be lucky to get four, okay? So the dates that you have to use this stuff is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Bread's a nightmare. I've noticed bread. Um, but in fairness, not a lot of people know this, but if you buy sliced bread and you've got room, as soon as you get it, put it in the fridge, okay? I guarantee you that you can still use that loaf of bread weeks and weeks and weeks after you've bought it and put it in there, okay? Um, it will pop, as the... The time goes on, it'd be more suitable for toast, but you can absolutely use it for toast, okay? Or if, like me, you don't give a monkeys, you know, I would still use a slice of bread that's been in the fridge for two weeks for sandwiches, okay? Some people are funny, some people don't care. Extra military, food is fuel, you just eat it, okay? As soon as you get used to all of this sort of stuff, the easier it's going to be, okay? The, the longer that you whinge and you moan and you feel gutted that you can't get this, you can't get that anymore, you're just going to stress yourself out, okay? 
And there's a lot of stress going on in the world without adding to that. Oh, tactical. Oh, no, you haven't. <laughs> Jesus, please. Right, I've just got to finish this, reading this out quick. Um, I find my usual shopping has all changed due to prices and dates. Heinz beans are now £1 a tin. One pound for a tin of beans. Mamma mia, what the hell are you doing? The one the part of a tin of beans. What the bloody hell are you think you're doing, huh? What the hell? One pound for a tin of beans. What the beep? God damn beep. What the beep, beep, beep. Mother f beep. One pound for a tin of beans. Are you killing me? Are you pulling my chain? Mamma mia, what the hell? Huh? <laughs> That's insane. I go to Aldi and I buy a tin of beans in there, like 20, 30p a tin. And to be honest, yeah, I'll check this out. Go and buy a tin of Heinz baked beans and go and buy the cheapest ones that you can in Aldi or Lidl, okay? Open them up and put them in sieves, all right? See how many baked beans that you've got left and look how much sauce is there. They're pretty much the goddamn same. If you don't want to do the physical experiment, look at the labels. Look at the protein content of each of those beans, those tins. One pound. And also, there's a lot of sugar in those Heinz baked beans, which is why a lot of people like them, because, you know, like I said, people have got massive addictions to sugar. And you know what? I remember watching this program, oh, my days, a long time ago now on television, and it had Johnny Vegas in there. And they all booked into this hotel. And the experiment was they weren't allowed to eat anything with sugar in. They weren't allowed to eat sugar at all. And I think it's for a couple of weeks. Well, in the first day, these people were losing their shit. They were seriously losing their mind. Okay? They really were. So, yeah, people, probably all of us, myself included, have an addiction to sugar. All right? Um, I've just scrolled past the email about the trailer. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Tack, um, I've just got an email. I haven't seen it all properly yet, but yeah, it looks like a good trailer. Right, now this is from Eddie, my brother Eddie. Yo, um, Eddie was saying, um, I'm still thinking about SHTF comms. Um, I think like-minded folks need to keep contacted keep contact once public communication has broken down, i.e. mobile phones and landlines, etc. It's a very good point. I was listening to, was it Adapt 2030 recently? And they were saying about um, um, the backup, the battery backups, the BBUs that go onto the cell towers, you know, where the network signals come from for your mobile phones and your cell phones. Um, when there's like a, a grid shutdown of power, there's no electricity, feeding those to give the signal for all of us to use our little phones. There's a battery backup. That will have a limited life in time. And when that battery runs out, guess what? No one, no one will be able to use network on their mobile phones. If the power goes out, goes out, no one's going to be able to use their landlines. So just imagine now in your mind, how would you fare for one day or even a week with no mobile phone and no landline. Imagine that for a week. How are you going to communicate with like minded preppers? Scary, isn't it? Um, unless we're worrying about an EMP, that's highly likely, especially what's going on over in Europe at the moment. Um, bug out comms would be the only way we can keep contact. Most people can probably get all the PMR radios, etc., over the counter. Yeah, um, here at the Bug Out, um, we sell um, ham radios there. The Bowfang ones, the seriously good bits of kit. Um, we sold out all of our um, um, PMR two-way radios. They were so popular, all of them just flew off the shelf. We're trying to look at um, updating those at some point in the near future because Eddie's absolutely right, you know, having comms, is seriously important and if most of us are honest to ourselves most of us haven't spent a lot of time getting involved and fully understanding um hand radios and cb radio radio citizen band radios are good um so he goes on to say listen to this this is important information 
And thanks for sharing this, Eddie, because I've shared this on my Instagram account. But um, if any of you guys have got a pen and paper or type it onto your phone or whatever you can, can you see if you can get um, a pen and paper? Or the best thing you can do, um, as I'll say it, if one of the moderators can type in the number, you can screenshot it and then write it down later because this is a very important number, okay? Now, listen in, folks. If you have a PMR two-way radio, use channel 1515 for contact of other preppers who are local to you. Messages can also be passed on to contacts further afield. Now, channel 15, now write this down, 446.18125 megahertz, okay? That's capital M, lowercase h, lowercase z. So it's 446 megahertz, 0.18125, okay? So if you write that down, you program that in your PMR radio, if you really need to see any like-minded preppers, because lots of people are preppers are going to be using that frequency to communicate on, okay? So if you're mobile, etc., you'll drive from that and about. Board outside, you can see it on the screen now. If you screenshot it right now, guys, you will have that number. Write it down, keep it on your phone or whatever. Even if the power goes off, you can still use your phone device. All of the apps on there will probably still work as long as it doesn't rely on the internet and um, network signal, okay? So yeah, write that number down, 446.18125 megahertz. That's MHZ, channel 15. Thanks, Eddie. You're a star, son. Uh, let me see. God, there's loads of messages on there. Um, thank you, everyone, to join in the mailing list so far. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been bloody hell. Wow. Thanks, all 30 of you, for joining the, med the mailing list. Um, some of you have joined in late. There's a link below the video. I've got a website. And on that website, there's um, a subscription. You join on there. All you've got to do is put your name. It doesn't have to be your real name, whatever name you want to use, and an email address. Every time new information comes my way, all I have to do is compose an email, send it, and hundreds, if not thousands of you will get the email instantly. And it's a great way to share information out there, okay? So, yeah. Thanks for subscribing to me on the mailing list on my website. That's seriously awesome. Really appreciate that. Now, time is getting on. I'm going to need a drink for this. Mm. Oh. oh, bloody hell. Let me see if I can refresh this because PayPal is an absolute nightmare sometimes. Security prompt. Oh. Yeah, I'm not a robot. <laughs> that's called normalization you know when you see that little security prompt i am not a robot click here what's that telling you do you guys remember that film i robot it's coming think i'm crazy time will tell we'll have a chat later right mountains or hills okay verify okay One there. <clears throat> right, waiting. Oh, God. oh, this is crazy. I don't know how I'm going to do this because it's asked for. I'm waiting for something to pop up on my screen now. I have to memorize it. There's no way I can check PayPal at the moment, dude, because my phone's recording this live stream and the bloody idiots have sent a code to my phone. Um, let me just see if I can just do this without destroying the live stream. Uh, no, nope, not a chance. Um, Tack, sorry, dude, I can't check it. I've tried, but it's asking me for a bloody code that's sent to my phone and it's recording. But um, if any of you guys um, are sticking around after, um, this live stream is going to be terminated in approximately five minutes. We've reached the end. Absolutely awesome. I will be going on my friend's um, YouTube channel straight after this. His name is Mike. You will see him in the chat right now. He's a moderator. His name will be Blue of the Spanner. And his name is Weapon Collector. Now, always good. I like to go out there, hang out with a few friends, have a little bit of a chat, etc. Oh, mods, jump on that one. There's some bloody scam out there again. 
Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely bonkers. So, I'll tell you what I could do. Let's actually go into the chat. The first time I've had bloody chance. It's absolutely going bonkers. It's updating. There's been so much. Oh, right. Here are we go. Right. If any one of you guys, beautiful guys, have got any questions, can you whack it in capital letters? Post it in the chat now. And uh, we'll see if we can answer some of your questions, okay? Now, there is going to be a feature on... Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, Mike, you got the same bloody um, spam in porn crap, whatever it is that's coming up in here. Yeah, there is going to be a facility on the website. So if any of you guys want to do um, live Q&A Zoom meetings with myself, um, that is going to be a possibility in the future. So um, if any of you guys... Um, are, would be considering something like that. Um, I advise that you write down as many questions as you can. Um, we'll arrange a Zoom meeting, okay? Uh, once um, a payment has gone through, confirmed, I will send you a joining link and we can have a live one-to-one -one chat. Any questions about anything, more of a prepping related and the way the world's going, I'll do my very best to help and um, I'll be online as well to aid me if I don't know um, what the answer would be. So there you go, Mike, weapon collector. Thanks for putting that in the chat, son. Excellent. Yeah, weapon collector. Yeah, it's more of a light-hearted, um, like being in a pub sort of thing, okay? It's not a serious prepping um, news broadcast like this. So I'm trying to see any questions. There's nothing, no one's got any questions. That's bizarre. I think you guys are too busy having a laugh, eh? Cornish Bob. I'll tell you what, Cornish Bob, you guys in Cornwall make a, a nice brew. I'll tell you, that's nice, eh? Mm. Yeah, born outside. Thanks for sticking that um, frequency number in the chat. That's wicked. And thanks to all the moderators in, in the house, by the way. Yeah, seriously cool. I just saw a CCC then. Honestly, you're a nightmare, you are. <laughs> what are you bloody like? Ah. Oh. Let me see. Oh, look, interesting. Run to the woods. You're saying about the green BT cabinets. Um, that is um, one of the things which I'm, I'm putting, I'm currently compiling, it's almost done now, um, an urban bug out course. It's a two day course. Oh, excuse me. It's gonna be up on the bug out website very shortly. And it's like I say, it's two days. So you come along, we do a lot of classroom stuff, most of the morning, then there'll be a lunch break. Then we're going to do a bug out scenario. We're going to leave the area. We're going to head off out into the hills. Okay. We're all going to camp there overnight. In the morning, we've got lots of other stuff to learn. Okay. We're going to advance to other locations, caches. We're going to be testing navigation skills. We can put all of your bug out bags through its paces. And um, we'll convene back to headquarters. And um, we'll have a debrief and maybe have a bit of crossbow shooting on our live crossbow range. So if any of you guys fancy that, it's a two-day course. It's going to be upcoming probably September, October. And um, as far as we're aware, we're the only um, company or website in the UK that are offering prepping and survival courses. And the cheapest by far anywhere in the UK. So we've literally just whittled down as much as we can to give you guys the best deal. Okay, so that is going to be coming up soon. So yeah, that's just reminded me seeing that green cabinet. Um, we'll be talking about caches, locations, urban environments, gaining entry. There's lots and lots to discuss. Okay, it's going to be a fascinating course. Bloody hell, hot sauce, fire! <clears throat> yeah, if any of you guys like your hot sauce, by the way, um, you can see the guy there with all the fire everywhere. Bloody hell, hot sauce. Um, click on to his um, YouTube link there, and it will take you through to his shop. Does some wicked, homemade, really nice sauces, okay? Some of them are a bit hot as well. I've only got a ghost in. Oh, honestly, dude. <laughs> it's good stuff. So, yeah, that's all good in the hood. What well, we're looking at for time. Blimey, look at that. It's crazy. It's nearly half past already. So, that is it. Uh, oh, God, what's this? Is that true that the prepper meet will be at your uh, local camp place next year um there's no location for next year's um, prepper meet we're currently looking in around derby if that doesn't come off it may even be wales okay 
Um, basically, Church Farm have absolutely shot themselves in the foot. They've took the piss far too much, and we're not coming back there again. Simple. So, sorry to end on a sick note. So, yeah, thanks, Reality, for um, dropping that on there. <laughs> Never mind. So, thanks to all of the moderators for coming along and keeping this nice, clean chat. It's been seriously awesome. Thanks ever so much for your kind donations as well. That really does mean a lot, okay? More than you probably realise. Um, not everyone donates on the Super Chat. A lot of you guys go to PayPal. The link is below the video. And people donate there as well because 100% of that goes straight to me and it helps out all of what I'm trying to achieve here, which is to let as many people know what's coming and how best to prepare for it. I'm just trying to help as many as I can. And I'm so blessed that there's over 200 people that stayed throughout the entire chat. And that is that is awesome to see that. It really, really is. Without you guys in the community um, inputting into this and spreading the message to other people in the street, family, friends, it goes a long way. Okay. Now, on a lovely note to end, um, don't feel bad about the future. Okay. It will turn in our favour. Okay. Because it's impossible. There's so many people waking up to what's going on now, more than you believe, okay? The mainstream media will have you believe that the majority are these people and these people and all of the conformist people. No, it's the opposite. More people are awake than you realise, okay? Why do you think they disabled the number of the thumbs down function on YouTube? Well, a little tiny reason for that. What the hell is that flying around in there? Jeez! I think it's a big bloody moth and I've got a light here, so that's not going to bode well. No. Guess what? There's a bat in my house. <laughs> it's circling me. I don't know how the hell he got in. All the windows are shut. So I'm going to let the bat out. Thanks ever so much for your kind donations, all the moderators, and everyone who's inputted. Thanks for watching. Stay funky. Oh, that bloody bat. What?